Hello all, uh, welcome to Decimal Point Analytics Unplugged, a podcast series where we explore the latest advancements in technology and their impact on various industries. I'm your host, Supriya Praveen. We're back with another episode where we'll be discussing a topic that's both foundational and fascinating in today's digital world, APIs. With me to explore this topic is our in-house expert, Shubendru Varma who leads our API development and integration team. He brings seven years of dedicated expertise in product development and innovation. Welcome, Shubendu. Uh, Thank you, Supriya. It's great to be here. Uh, Let's kick start. Uh, Let's uh, kick things off uh, with the basics. For our listeners who may not be familiar with it, what is an API and why is it so important? Uh, so, super in simple terms, API is a way b- by means of which different systems talk to each other. Uh, they may share some information, instruct each other for a particular process. Uh, very often, these systems are nothing but applications. Um, and we broadly c- categorize this system into client and server. So, you can think of a client as the one who is a requester and the server as the one who responds to this request. Um Uh, Suppose you are browsing the internet and you are using a a browser, Chrome browser for that purpose. And in this case, uh, the client would be browser and the server will be the, uh, and it will be making an API call to the server to get some data. Uh, So this is the basic uh, communication that happens between a client and server. Also, this API call is not limited to client and server. Uh, there are scenarios when server can call, can make an API call to server, or uh, a, a server make may make a API call to the client itself. Uh, so in a typical API call, um, I mean, I would like to you know elaborate on what for our viewers, what is the API call? Uh, a client uh, who pass, let's say in this scenario, a client is making an API call, so it will pass on a request. This will this request will con- uh, will contain um, uh, the location where the processing should happen. Uh, it will contain some parameters, uh, and uh, it will contain some meta information. And the server will receive this request, process it, and it will uh, you know uh, create a response. So the server again sends a response uh, to the same location from where the request was raised. And it also includes, you know, a little bit of meta information about the response. And uh, so, yeah, that is what uh, an API call is. Uh, so how have uh, APIs evolved over the years, especially with the rise of the digital uh, era? Yeah, so uh, the concept of APIs, while it may not be uh, term- termed as API at that time, but it was around 1970s. And it was used only for internal communication. Say, uh, we on the same machine. In the same machine, the, if you wanted to talk with different systems, with different programming languages, it was used for that purpose. Uh, but with the growth of computing, you know, around uh, 1990s, uh, API very dated, and they were now uh, API calls made from one machine to another. So. With the explosion of internet, with the increase in web surfing uh, around two, 2000, uh, so these API became more public. And, you know, people, uh, so everything contained an API call now. Uh, all the data, data that was processed that came through API. So around 2010, um, so the companies uh, realized the value of APIs and then they started adopting an API first design. Now, API first design is something, you know, which uh, which is, uh, you know, designing your software based on API. So based on API request, you will design your software. And this, this gave the whole team, you know, to uh, integrate. It gave a chance for the teams to integrate faster and it allowed for better scalability. So... That was uh, the next um, milestone of API. So uh, from 2010 to 2020, there were further advancements in API design. 
security versioning standards, etc. And uh, these included serverless APIs. Uh, in that serverless API, you did not uh, require to you know provision your server. So uh, you may you may not uh, purchase a very heavy EC2 machines, a very costly EC2 machine to run your APIs. Uh, it also included uh, event driven APIs where the API would start processing, the API would be called on basis on some events. So, and we also saw companies like Google, IBM uh, offering ML and AI capabilities through APIs directly. And so this enabled non-data scientists to use, uh, non-data scientists uh, like developers or even a function analyst to use machine learning with ease. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, let's talk about uh, decimal point analytics uh, journey with APIs. How has our approach uh, to utilizing and integrating APIs uh, changed over time? Uh, at decimal point analytics, you know, we primarily used APIs for web application. Even before we used web application, we had a full stack framework where, you know, the whole web application was served uh, from our full stack code. Uh, but uh, these had numerous issues. Uh, so you you had to maintain your code uh, from code maintenance and from, from deployment and scalability. So after that, we switched to uh, front-end and back-end framework. Uh, we uh, adopted React for front-end framework because it was very lightweight. And we adopted APIs and mostly in Python uh, because it was quick. It was quickly to integrate. Uh, it had a very low learning curve. So we use APIs uh, for that purpose. Uh, after that, we have also providing data via the APIs. Uh, so we have some clients where, you know, they take the data in bulk, historical data or uh, some other data they take in bulk. bulk. Uh, we also have some event driven APIs where, you know, any uh, for some particular events, let's say a file has arrived. Uh, so for that particular event, some processing takes place and we push the final data into the client's, a client's API. Uh, we also have worked uh, on a client delivery with WebSocket where, you know, a client would request uh, request data via WebSocket and WebSocket is something uh, where, you know, the, you, you, that WebSocket is something, uh, let me repeat this. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so we also have been delivering data with WebSocket. WebSocket is one technology uh, where, you know, you can deliver the feeds real time. So this has been very influential where we have to deliver the data to the client in real time. And we, we also have been consumers of API. So uh, we have consumed APIs like SOAP. SOAP is a very traditional old API where, you know, it's a very uh, bulky, uh, it's very encrypted it's very secure so we have uh, consumed the soap apis uh, we also uh, we have also integrated third party uh, payment gateway into our applications and they have provided us with a webhook call so we have also consumed the webhook call over there uh, we also use apis for our internal purposes so let's say we have a, a big we have a very big application made of very small small apis so we call them microservices and we have implemented uh, rest plus grpc into this i hope that is not technical but uh, so these are kinds of an api rest and grpc but we haven't used this at uh, for our uh, own purposes and from a futures perspective we are looking at graphql uh, graphql is a very uh, rising uh, need for uh, applications where you where if you let's say you have a data storage so if you want data from that you don't want all the fields from it so if you want to have a selective fields or uh, you want to uh, apply query to that field what we can do is we can use graphql to uh, fetch those particular values so that was it uh, that was a journey of api i would say within the dpa <coughs> Uh, thanks for sharing that, uh, Shubhendu. Uh, for businesses uh, who are looking to leverage APIs, uh, what are some best practices uh, they should keep in mind? 
according to you. Okay. So uh, when you are building an API, when you are building an enterprise APIs or whether it is for a small scale project, whether it is for a large scale projects, uh, the first and foremost thing that comes to my mind is security. And security can be implemented in a lot of ways. Uh, you may have, uh, uh, encrypt, uh, you can encrypt data in transit. So when data comes, goes from client to server, it should be encrypted or server to server, it should be encrypted. There should be a controlled access. So your API should not be um, accessible to everyone. Uh, even those should be role controlled. So admin, the so let's say a person with role of admin, they should have access to certain APIs and person with the role of member should have should not have access to those APIs. Uh, so security is the first and foremost thing. And next you would want to do rate limiting. So what this will help, this will help uh, in a fair usage of API. So your customers would use the API fairly. Uh, and uh, this will also prevent uh, DDoS attacks. Uh, you know, a malicious, uh, malicious person may try to over, uh, like they may make multiple API calls within a very short span of time, thereby, you know, uh, blocking your traffic, basically. So that is there. Then you need to have a proper versioning of APIs, uh, well-documented uh, APIs, you know, because you, the end, mostly if you're designing an API, and the end end consumers would be the developers most in most of the cases and developers they would require a very good documentation uh, if you do versioning uh, versioning will make sure that if you have some uh, unintended unintended uh, let's say results so you may want to roll back to the previous versions again you should uh, monitor your api uh, monitor uh, how much has been used, how much uh, it, it's been used regularly. What are the response times of API? Uh, because if the response types are huge, you may uh, you know lose interest uh, from the developers and the error rate should be very low. So these, I think these are the main consideration that one should take when they are designing an API. And that's interesting, uh, Shubendu. As we wrap up, could you give our listeners a sneak peek into the future of APIs, especially in the analytics domain? Yeah. Uh, so in future, the number of data sources and platform will grow. We are seeing so many products and SaaS-based companies coming up. And, you know, we have so many databases so and so many connectors. Uh, so it would be become more complex to centralize these. Uh, so this the API will be designed to effort effortlessly pull data from various sources. Uh, it could be IoT, it could be social media, uh, it could be even a uh, enterprise software uh, to provide a unified view. Uh, second, I would say uh, when you have lot of data, so you have varied data. So the data points, so the connection of these data points will become very important. So this is where graph databases, we will use API to leverage graph databases. And uh, also there is real-time analytics. Um, so if you are a very crucial business operation, you would want to have real-time data processing and insights. So API will evolve to cater those needs. They will allow you to uh, provide on-the-fly analysis with the data. They can also add a visualization as well as actions and recommendations. Uh, also, uh, so this will be is the most important thing that uh, APIs in the future will be even stronger. And last one, uh, with the data breaches that uh, they are becoming increasingly common these days, you know, especially when we, we are, you know, uh, out of the company network, you know, they are, uh, we are sitting at our homes and working through uh, unprotected networks. So data breaches are very common. So I'm sure that API will place an even stronger emphasis on security. And we are looking at end-to-end -end encryption, even stronger enhanced uh, authorization mechanisms and stricter compliance on data production regulations. Uh, so that's all that I see as the future of API. Uh, Shubhendu, thank you for shedding light on the world uh, of API for us. Uh, it's been uh, very insightful.
thank you Supya. thank you so that thanks for having me uh, so as we wrap up uh, to our listeners thank you for joining us today for more in depth insights and discussions stay tuned to the decimal point analytics unplugged podcast until next time signing off thank you